The A7 IV just got announced and I'm going to tell you about all its new features and specs as quickly as I possibly can talk. If I'm talking too quick for you, click the little slow down button on the settings at the bottom there. After you've watched this, you can go watch Gerald's video and then you should know everything you need to know. In no particular order, let's get going. The A7 IV is a hybrid camera designed for photo content creators, video content creators, and now streamers as well. It has a new 33 megapixel sensor that has not been seen in a Sony camera before. It has a three inch very angle 1.03 million dot screen, AKA a flippy screen with a three to two aspect ratio. It has a completely new dial, which basically takes it from being a photo camera to a video camera and vice versa at the flip of a switch. So if you are shooting photos at a specific set of settings, it retains those. And then when you go to video, it retains from the previous time that you're shooting video. You don't need to keep going into the menus and changing your settings around. The exposure dial on the top is now completely customizable to anything you want. It doesn't have any markings on it. So if you want to use it for your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed, whatever you want, you can. A full size HDMI port on the side, so you don't need to buy a stupid cable anymore. You can use a proper HDMI cable. Headphone and microphone jacks obviously. 4K60 in Super 35 mode. Yes, it does 4K60, unfortunately, with a crop. Basically, Sony has prioritized the image quality here. There is no line skipping. There is no pixel binding. Binding, binning, tomato, tomato. 4K24 and 30 is 7K over sample video. So that means you're getting 7,032 by 39 and 58 pixels into a 3840 by a 2160 4K shot. No 4K120, but you do have 120 in 1080p. 4K60 10-bit 422 can be recorded for over one hour with no overheating and then shut down. So they They've improved the heatsink. Soft skin effect is available on medium, low, and high, so you can make yourself look beautiful. 759 phase detection autofocus points with 94% coverage. It's the same autofocus system and algorithm used in the A1. It's not as fast as in the A1 because it's a different sensor, but it's the same technology. For the very first time, you have real-time IAF for humans, animals, and for birds. This has not been previously available in the A7S III. It was only previously available for humans with real-time IAF. Here's what I'm excited about. Autofocus assist, previously only available in the FX6. I love this feature and really useful. At any time, you can override your autofocus with manual focus just by turning the manual focus ring. Once you let go, it will default back to autofocus so you can transition between shots a little bit better manually. Here's a brand new feature which I'm actually excited to use. It's called Focus Maps. Think of it like focus peaking, but they use colors to show you what's in focus and what's not. So what's in front of the depth of field, behind the depth of field will be different colors. So you can kind of visualize your focus. If you need to pull focus to a specific point or go back, you can see where you are, where you've been, and where you're going. Here's a new one called breathing compensation. So a lot of Sony's newer lenses, like the 50 mil, the 35 mil, they do have focus breathing because they are designed mostly for photo, but we use them for video. This will reduce the effects of focus breathing and allow you to get better transitions. Now it will only work with certain Sony lenses. Most of the GMs, most of the G lenses, any of Sony's more modern lenses, this will work with. It will not unfortunately work with third party lenses though. You have all the creative looks from the previous Sony cameras. And I didn't think we'd get this one, but you also have a Cinetone. So if you need to match this to an FX, three and a7s3 and a1 you can it also has the same color science as the a1 and as the a7s3 so this is technically now the cheapest b camera that matches best to an fx3 a7s3 or an a1 we get s log 3 with a minimum iso of 800 apparently on this one there is no dual base isos gerald will leave this one up to you 15 plus stops of dynamic range new menus and they are the touch menus too active stabilization i like this also works in 4k 60 metadata is recorded in certain modes for being able to stabilize in catalyst browse 10 frames per second both mechanical and electronic for photos you can shoot up to a continuous 828 uncompressed raws and jpegs that's obviously going to be dependent on the memory card. You're probably going to need the CF type A for that. Speaking of memory cards, two slots again. Slot A is a combo CF Express type A slash SD card. So that dual combo port. And then slot B is uh, just SD card. With photos, you don't have to wait until the shots have gone onto the memory cards. That buffer has been cleared before you can access the menus. Apparently now you can get into the menus straight away. You don't have to wait. There's a ton of bitrate options available, much like you had on the A7S III. XAVCS 4K, SHD, HS 4K, SI 4K. K, SIHD, 10 bit in all of those options, 422. All can be recorded SD cards. V90s are recommended for obviously the highest bit rates. The imaging edge connection has apparently been improved. We'll see about that. You don't have to rely on Wi-Fi anymore. You can just use a Bluetooth connection if you wanted to. You also have five gigahertz transfer for Wi-Fi speeds instead of just 2.4 gigahertz. Now the part for streaming here that Sony has included, you can stream 4K 15 frames per second HD 60 over USB directly into your computer. No capture card required. I guess it just acts like a uh, like a webcam. You can also record internally at the same time 
time as doing this. So as an example, Sony said you could live stream at 4K 15 frames per second and then record internally at 4K 30. So if your stream went down, you still have a backup 4K 30 inside the camera. And then finally, it will start shipping in December. It's available for pre-order apparently 24 hours after the announcement. So 24 hours after this video goes live. Pricing, we were told, will be roughly between $24.99 and $27.99. Price hadn't been finalized, even though this is the day before. Hasn't been finalized yet. In poutine dollars, that'll be $31.99 to $34.99 Canadian. That's everything I've got for you. Now you can go watch Gerald's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.